Rosa Parks, my story. We fight for the right to vote, by Rosa Parks with Jim Haskins. The second time I tried to register to vote, I was put off a Montgomery City bus for the first time. I didn't follow the rules. Black people had special rules to follow. Some drivers made black passengers step in the front door and pay their fare, and then we had to get off and go around to the back door and get on. Often, before the black passengers got around to the back door, the bus would take off without them. There were thirty-six seats on a Montgomery bus. The first ten were reserved for whites. Even if there were no white passengers on the bus, there was no law about the ten seats in the back of the bus. But it was sort of understood that they were for black people. Blacks were required to sit in the back of the bus, and even if there were empty seats in the front, we couldn't sit in them. Once the seats in the back were filled, then all the other black passengers had to stand. If whites filled up the front section, some drivers would demand that blacks give up their seats in the back section. It was up to the bus drivers, if they chose, to adjust the seating in the middle sixteen seats. They carried guns and had what they called police power to rearrange the seating and enforce all the other rules of segregation on the buses. Some bus drivers were meaner than others. Not all of them were hateful, but segregation itself is vicious. And to my mind, there was no way you could make segregation decent or nice or acceptable. The driver who put me off was a mean one. He was tall and thick-set with an intimidating posture. His skin was rough-looking. And he had a mole near his mouth. He just treated everybody black badly. I had been on his bus as a passenger before, and I remember when a young woman got on the bus at the front and started to the back, and he made her get off the bus and go around to the back door. One day in the winter of 1943, the bus came along. And the back was crowded with black people. They were even standing on the steps leading up from the back door, but up front there were vacant seats right up to the very front seats. So I got on at the front and went through this little bunch of folks standing in the back, and I looked toward the front and saw the driver standing there and looking at me. He told me to get off the bus and go to the back door and get on. I told him I was already on the bus and didn't see the need of getting off and getting back on when people were standing in the step well. And how was I going to squeeze on anyway? So he told me if I couldn't go through the back door, that I would have to get off the bus. My bus, he called it. I stood where I was. He came back and he took my coat sleeve, not my arm, just my coat sleeve. He didn't take his gun out. I was hardly worth the effort because I wasn't resisting. I just didn't get off and go around like he told me. So after he took my coat sleeve, I went up to the front and I dropped my purse. Rather than stoop or bend over to get it. I sat right down in the front seat, and from a sitting position, I picked up my purse. He was standing over me, and he said, "Get off my bus." I said, "I will get off." He looked like he was ready to hit me. I said, "I know one thing: you better not hit me." He didn't strike me. I got off, and I heard someone mumble from the back, "How come she don't go around and get in the back?" I guess the black people were getting tired because they wanted to get home, and they were standing in the back and were tired of standing up. I do know they were mumbling and grumbling as I went up there to get myself off the bus. 
She ought to go around the back and get on. They always wondered why you didn't want to be like the rest of the black people. That was the 1940s when people took a lot without fighting back. I did not get back on the bus through the rear door. I was coming from work, and so I had already gotten a transfer slip to give the next driver. I never wanted to be on that man's bus again. After that, I made a point of looking at who was driving the bus before I got on. I didn't want any more run ins with that mean one.